Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Larry Dossie. I bring greetings from the USA. It is now 30 years since I met uh, Dr. Ramesh Kapadia, and uh, it was a memorable event. Our meeting was occasioned by an invitation to deliver the Gandhi Memorial Lecture in New Delhi at the Gandhi Peace Foundation in 1988. This invitation was mediated by one of the greatest uh, scientists in India in the 20th century, the physicist Professor D. S. Kothari. Following my lecture in New Delhi, I was invited to Ahmedabad to lecture at Gujarat Vidya Peet by Director Professor Ramlal Parikh. And it was during this visit that I met Dr. Kapadia and his dear wife, Dr. Kokola, and their delightful children, Samir and Bina. At the time, I was practicing internal medicine in Dallas, Texas, in the USA, and I had written about the psychological and the spiritual side of healing, including the book Space, Time, and Medicine, which caught Dr. Kotari's attention. Uh, this was during the early 1980s, and at that time in the U.S., important groundbreaking development, developments were taking place, uh, not just in the U.S., but in the Western world in general. We were waking up to what we now call mind-body therapies. These were ancient insights in the East, uh, as all of you know, but uh, they were new to us Westerners. And so these therapies did not repudiate physical approaches such as uh, medications and surgical interventions, but they, they supplemented and uh, complemented them. Extensive research began to reveal that mind-body therapies resulted not merely in psychological improvements, but they also resulted in actual physical changes as well. Alleviation of physical and psychological stress was correlated with improvements in health and longevity. Modest physical activities like jogging became immensely popular as a health measure in the U.S. And uh, meditation and yoga, uh, which had long been dismissed in our country as frivolous Eastern pursuits, they were adopted by thousands of uh, uh, individuals in America. Dr. Dean Ornish, who was a respected American cardiologist, showed that coronary artery obstructions could actually be reversed by a low-fat diet, moderate exercise, imagery, visualization, and meditation, and also group therapy, which emphasized open discussions and the sharing of feelings between people. And subsequent research has confirmed and extended these findings. For example, we now know, based on an avalanche of data, that people who follow some sort of spiritual path in their life live on average 7 to 13 years longer than people who do not follow such a path and they have a lower incidence of all the major diseases such as heart disease and cancer. And so, it is with immense admiration that I congratulate Dr. Kapadia and the Universal Healing Program and the establishment of this beautiful new center. This program is at the forefront of medical research in the interaction of mind and body and the role of spirituality and health. And this program has already restored thousands of individuals to greater health, productivity, longevity, and happiness. But there's more. I wish to emphasize a key feature of the Universal Healing Program, and it's the recognition during quiet meditation that one's essential self is boundless in space and time. This recognition lies at the heart of some of the world's greatest spiritual traditions. The, imp the implications are simply stunning, because if our consciousness is indeed infinite in time, it's immortal and it's eternal. And if our consciousness is infinite in space, 
then it's omnipresent. It's present everywhere. And if our consciousness is without boundaries in space and time, then in some sense, in some dimension, all the individual consciousnesses, past, present, and future, come together to unite as one mind. Uh, this recognition is not you to your culture, of course. Uh, it's been recognized in the writings of many sages in your history, including Gandhiji. But we in the West are rediscovering this concept and are cloaking it in the language of non-locality, which is a concept borrowed from modern physics. The basic fundamental insight is the same. It is the infinitude in space and time of consciousness. I happen to believe that this oneness and unity are not limited to human beings, but include all of sentient life on earth. If this is so, then all of life becomes sacred and precious and worth preserving. I think this uh, realization is necessary if we are to survive the epidemic of uh, greed and selfishness and narcissism and pathological individuality and the resulting destruction that threatens our future on this planet. Therefore, I feel that the Universal Healing Program has massive global and planetary implications. The deepest lessons of this program extend far beyond the individual health and longevity of people, although that is vital. So make no mistake, while this program promotes individual health as it should, at the same time it is promoting the health of the whole of life on earth. So it is, it is my honor to congratulate Dr. Ramesh Kapadi for his establishment in 1991 of the Universal Healing Program and now this new center at Gujarat Vidya Peet. This program is a shimmering jewel in India's already transcendent crown. My wish is that you continue to make vital contributions not only to individual health, but also to the perpetuation of life in the largest sense, the health of our fragile species on our beloved home, this great earth. I cannot imagine a greater contribution. Thank you.